I'm going to turn you around, but um, I am here with Lynette, and we're going to talk about making a shadow box pendant. Let me see if I can switch this around. We're still doing a little setup and a little prep um, for the demo, but we'll wait for some more people to show up, and I'll just kind of show off the samples that we've made for this demo. So our plan, uh, just to kind of give you a rundown of what we are looking to do today is we're going to show you how to make a frame and we'll talk about, you know, the different types of, or different forms of metal that you can use. Um, we are going to discuss I guess soldering it onto the background and then how to sweat solder. Um, so let's say like on this example, the, the fly and the brass piece at the back, those are soldered on, but they're not, um, I didn't solder them and then place or place them in place and then put a little solder pallion next to it. Sweat soldering allows you to get a really clean um, join. And what, let me see, it's usually used when you solder like a flat piece onto another flat piece of metal. So we'll just pretend that this is it. And say you want to put this here, but you don't want the little shadow of solder, um, if you were just to put a pallion next to it uh, to flow under it. So what sweat soldering does or is, you place, you apply flux, place pallions of solder on the back of the piece that you want to attach to the background. You'll flow the solder onto this back piece and then, oops place the piece with the solder on the back, onto your background, reheat the entire piece to reflow that solder. And so there are a couple little tricks to keep that solder from flowing out onto the background and up onto the surface of the piece you're attaching. So um, we will go over some of that. We also, the samples that we're making this week or today are um, using some of the insects that we have available on the site this week. We are doing a an insect spotlight, impression dye spotlight. So I know there's a bunch of shot plates, a bunch of different insects that are available. Now I brought a couple. These are big. <laughs> the this little beetle. I love it. And then this grasshopper. So there's a bunch of different types of insects. Some of them we're going to demo. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, no, I brought these. So here's our spider shot plate that is available now. I think I pressed a spider. Maybe not. Uh, and then, oh, yeah. There's the little spiders. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're so cute. Yeah, but it was one. directly in front of me. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Together what we have it all. <laughs> and then this is another insect shot plate that is up right now. And let's see. I have a couple stampings of those. So the little dragonfly. These are really good sizes um, for pendants. Obviously, we've both used a bunch of them. Hi, Patty. Hi, Pat. Um, so before we get started, does anyone have any, um, any questions sort of about what we're going to be demonstrating this morning? I'll show you some close-ups. Has anyone done any work like this before? Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Dan Diana. Hi, Landon. love these tutorial days i always look forward to them yay we are gonna try to find the twig um 
I knew once you guys saw this sample that Annie made that you were going to want <laughs> that twig. So after the demo, Annie and I will probably go back over to the other shop and see if Try we can and find, find that. Because it. it's the perfect size. Um, I don't... It's not currently available. It's not. If we can find it, we'll make it available. Yeah. So when you're, you know, designing for sweat soldering or if you want to make a... Um, a shadow box type pendant, there are a few elements you'll need. You'll need a back plate and you will need a frame. These examples, let's see. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so to make the shadow box type design, you need a back plate. It can be textured or not. Textured is definitely gonna be a little bit more challenging. So if you haven't done anything like this before and you haven't done sweat soldering, I'd recommend keeping your back plate Plain. smooth, um, no texture, at least for the first one mm -hmm. that you do. But that's just, yep, that's, just that's good advice. And then you will need a frame of some sort. So this is made with square wire. Do you know what gauge? Because I know people will ask. No. Nope. Probably like 10 you think 6 12 yeah, or 10 i think probably 10 um we don't have a gauge over here do we yes oh right there oh we do <laughs> it's hiding <laughs> let's see well so a 12 gauge um so that is what Lynette's used. These, I used rectangular wire. Um, it just gives you a slightly different look. I really like the, the thickness, the width of the square wire and how it gives it a really substantial frame. Um, but I like, I like <laughs> Annie's because I like that the frame is taller than any of the elements within the frame. So on mine... The frame isn't even as tall as my little dragonfly because I pressed him solid and I pressed him really thick. But I like how her her frame is taller. It more encloses it yeah. more, I guess. Uh, and we were talking before uh, the before this live. It's like these these sort of remind me of like a petri dish or looking through a microscope. Um, and so that's just kind of a fun, I guess, effect. So play around with the size and shape of your frame. Um, you could also, this may be getting into it too much, but let's say that you're working on this, you have your frame that is taller than the elements in the shadow box. You could then come in with, you know, another stamping or another, you know, you could use a, a cutout blank to and, and solder it onto oops onto the top edge of that frame so that's just another way to add a little bit of depth to the design um, but really there's besides having a backplate and a frame and then practicing sweat soldering and learning how to get these multiple elements together uh, without leaving much of a much cleanup required that's kind of the basics of creating a shadow box. Oh, looking through a telescope. Yes, a telescope. That's cool. I did um, upload a handout for this demo. It's just really basic kind of written instructions, but you can find it in the files section of the Potter People Facebook group. Yeah. So if nobody has any immediate questions, we're going to first show you how to form yeah. a frame and we're going to use our quick form press right over there <laughs> you don't have to use the quick form press you could just use pliers your hands whatever um think about the demo we did last week on making bangles this is exactly the, the same, same thing process. except on a smaller scale and also your frame doesn't have to be circular no it can be any shape you want yep so that is 
We will head over here. I love the texture on the back plate on the ones with the taller frame. I'm going to show you how to do that. It is not a texture plate. Um, it is a hammer hand piece texture that I apply after all the elements are soldered in place. Okay, so I'm using our quick form press. When you purchase, when you purchase the quick form press, it comes with a bunch of accessories that Annie and I well, I shouldn't even include you because I'm pretty sure this was all me, <laughs> but I've made a mess of them, but they look really nice when you <laughs> on their base and they're organized. Yeah. They, yeah, need to do some cleanup, but I have um, the largest ring former attachment set up on here. So I will get this, di whatever this diameter is, I don't know it offhand. That's the size of frame that I'm going to get, mm -hmm. but I'll get a perfectly round frame. So I have my 12 gauge square wire and I'm just going to use the quick form to slowly form this wire. And you want to take small bites um, so that you don't end up with like a choppy circle with weird little angles points in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also as she's feeding it through, she's making sure that the wire stays flat against the former and it's not twisting at all. Yeah. Um, so I could keep going and I could make myself a coil if I wanted like two frames the exact same size, which is what I did for uh, this little sample. Um, because I was thinking I might make them into earrings, but then I decided it was too heavy for earrings. But <laughs> you can make multiples the same exact size if yep. you want. So then I can go in with my jeweler saw and cut here and prepare this for soldering just mm -hmm. like we did in our demo last week. I don't yep. know. Do it's I don't think we need okay. to show soldering I don't think so yet. Either. Um it's she, it'll be a butt joint so she'll just cut through the join, make sure it's a tight fit and then solder it together with hard solder. Yep. Um so we'll skip ahead and you guys get the idea for that. And I have this one that's already formed and soldered and I'm now ready to solder it to my back plate. You do wanna make sure that the bottom edge of your frame is perfectly flat. Oh yeah, so let me show that really quick. Do you use the diamond thing? Yeah. Um, is that the same one? Where'd you get that one? This one is from Har. I brought this from home. Okay. Um, it's just from Harbor Freight. <laughs> it's okay. A, a so diamond. this is too, but it's a different. I like one. that one. It's a different one. This this is from Harbor Freight. Um, I don't normally recommend Harbor Freight tools, but I actually do love this thing, and it's a four sided diamond hone like okay. knife sharpening block. So this comes out, and there's different um, grits. Mm -hmm. So I use this. It works really nicely for sanding things. It's so flat. good. Lynette turned me on to this and I stole my husband. So you, you want to make sure the bottom of your frame is perfectly flat so that we get a really nice clean solder seam mm -hmm. on our back plate. Yep. Um, so you would just sand until you no longer see any low spots on that frame. Here's one that I have partially... <laughs> sanded so you can see over on the right side there's that darkness um that is not perfectly flush so you want to make sure that yours looks like the one that just showed that it's perfectly flat smooth and yeah i'm ready to solder oops does anyone have any questions so far Use a marker. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can, before you start sanding, use just a Sharpie and cover the bottom edge uh, with that Sharpie and then sand it until the Sharpie's gone. Our flux has seen better days. <laughs> it looks like mine at home. Someone left, left it the open. lid off for like a week and it, it doesn't want to reconstitute. <laughs> Awesome. This is more than I need, but it's okay. A lot of it's water because it's kind of gross. 
Um, so a lot of it will burn off. So what I'm going to do is I have um, pre-cut and balled up some little chips of solder. I'm actually going to use hard again because that's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're worried about your seam in your frame opening back up, go ahead and step down to using medium solder. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to worry so much about that seam becoming visible or reopening or whatever. You can also, if you want to keep using hard solder, cover that seam with like a masking fluid. So this we, is... we really like Ronda Coriel's masking, masking mud, mud, which you can get from Rio Grande. Um, there's the number if you need it. You could also use yellow ochre mm -hmm. paste that you make with yellow ochre powder and water. Some people even use whiteout but you want to be really careful with the fumes from that. Yep. Basically what that does is it makes the metal dirty. <laughs> so yeah, that... and solder will not flow on dirty metal. It needs the metal to be clean, which is what the flux is providing. Yep. So I'm going to use these little solder chips that I cut, and I'm going to place them along the outside edge, and then I'm just going to heat the piece until everything comes to the flow temperature of the solder, and the solder will join the two pieces. And if you're a newbie, um, one really important habit to start early on is holding the torch in your non-dominant hand. Yep. So I'm right-handed, but I'm holding the torch in my left hand. You want your right hand for tweezers. Yep, your dominant hand. Yeah, sorry, your dominant yep. hand. <laughs> Not to be biased to the lefties. You want your dominant <laughs> hand to have the finer control. Um, You'll get very good at using your left hand to hold the torch after you practice it for a while. So she's placing the pallions of solder, the balled up solder along the outside the of dirty. the frame um, so that when she heats it, the metal or the solder will be pulled in toward the center of the frame and she's going to cut off the, the background um, or the excess metal after, after soldering. soldering. So she's not worried about having to do any cleanup on the outside edge. What is the recommended back gauge? It'll really depend on your design and what you're wanting to use it for. Um, this is probably, it looks like maybe it started as 20 gauge. Um, this? Yeah. I think it started as 22 and it's probably like 24 Way too now. thin, okay. It's, it's pretty <laughs> thin. I put on the handout a range that I would suggest. Um, if you get too thin, it wants to warp on you when you're heating. And that will cause problems when soldering. Yep. So I wouldn't go any thinner than like 24 gauge. It's no. the absolute thinnest I would go. Yeah. And depending, you know, if, if you're making a ring, you could obviously go, you would want to go thicker. Probably 18, maybe 16, just depends on the weight. So it'll really depend on your project and what you prefer. But most of the time, you don't want to go thin for no, almost anything. No, and I can get away with thinner because it's a smaller, like, area diameter yeah if, if i had a really big open area and i was making a huge frame i would want to bump up the thickness mm -hmm. because i don't want it to warp and if i'm trying to solder something you know a frame around something that's three inches across and i'm using 24 gauge it is absolutely going to warp 100 percent. yeah oh patty just said you guys make a great tag team thanks patty so now i'm heating the metal until everything comes up to temperature um, I have way too much flux on here, but that's okay. I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit. That square gauge or square wire, it's thick, so it needs a little bit more heat. Yeah. So yeah, she's just heating. starting to flow. And if you get your frame too hot, the solder will flow up the frame instead of joining to the back plate. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure that everything is the same temperature. So you can also heat from below if you like. Um, I don't tend to like using those tripods or mesh or anything because mm -hmm. I I get like fire scale in the pattern of the mesh, which drives me nuts. <laughs> um, same. <laughs> so I tend to just 
control my heat from the top. But we'll quench and pickle and then we'll look at it and see if I have any gaps that I need to go back in and fill with solder or if I'm good. Our big old pickle crock pot. Oops. And then after it's clean, we're ready to solder our little element into yeah. the frame. Yep. We have our pickle really hot, so it'll probably clean really fast. Really fast. Hi from Charlotte Airport in between flights. So glad I could catch some of this. <laughs> uh, Lynn. Oh, Lynn hi, Lynn. <laughs> Yay. What better way to spend a layover? <laughs> than hanging out with your friends. Hanging out. I hope you're not one of those really annoying people that has us blasting on speakerphone in the middle of the airport for you. <laughs> those people that use their phone yes. on like full volume in public places drive me nuts. Playing games loud. Or like, bing, talking, bing, bing. like having a personal conversation on speakerphone. It's very... Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't even know the word. It's not my favorite. Okay, so this... Looks good, I have solder that flowed all the way around, but over here I have a couple of small gaps. Hold it. Might have to go under the light. Okay, so you can see, yep, so there's a couple little gaps there. So fix that before you move on. If yep. you do get gaps, um, oops under your frame but you can see how on like the inside of the frame all of the little globs of solder they're on the outside so she can clean them up yeah okay so it's still a little dirty okay we'll come back let that clean for a little bit and then i'll re-solder yep so Let's see, we'll grab this one. Nope, she's, she's not one of those people. I, know. I wouldn't have said it if I thought she was. <laughs> so this is similar to the one that she's making right now. And you can see after she soldered everything together, she's cut off the excess material and sanded it flat, like flush with the edge of the square wire. Um, for mine, I left a little tiny lip around the edge and my I still I soldered the frame on the same way so I put the solder pallions on the outside um, but then I went in after everything was finished and cleaned up that joint using needle files and different sanding discs just to make that outer lip clean um, and the the main reason, if I'm completely honest, <laughs> is I made a bunch of frames first, and then I just found a disc using my disc, disc cutter that was just slightly larger than the frame that I made. So there wasn't a lot of planning <laughs> on my end, but it worked out. We have this one that's like that, but either I or you can solder down. Oh, yeah. Yep, so just that little tiny edge. Do you want to do this one or do you want me to? Do you mind? No. Okay. okay. So I'm ready. <laughs> okay. We'll come back. We'll do them both at the same time. So the one closest to me, or closest to you, is the one that had the gaps. Yeah, and I could pay really close attention to where the gaps are and like only place solder in those parts. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. And I know that generally this side is the side that had some gaps. So I'm just gonna place some more solder pallions and flow it again and it should even out. You can also, while you're soldering, you could gently press down using tweezers or a soldering pick to gently press down on the frame to get a better joint. Yeah, you just want to make sure whatever you're pressing on is fully supported from behind. Yes. If you put pressure on silver when it's hot, it will fracture. It will. It's it crazy. Be, it is. It, it I have seen silver cracks. crack like glass. It is the weirdest thing. 
but if you have it heated to a certain temperature and then you put pressure on it, um, it, it actually creates a shattered edge. Yeah. Like it really just breaks, which is so bizarre to see. And then I think there was one tiny gap over here. People always ask, like, how do you know how much solder to use? Um, <laughs> that's a really hard question to answer. Yeah. I always kind of tell people as like a general rule of thumb, you want like two thirds of the surface area of the seam is kind of like the rule okay. of thumb I go by. But even that's hard to like visualize. And I'm a puny solder. <laughs> I hardly put any solder. Are you appalled at how much solder I'm using? A little. <laughs> not appalled. It's just, <laughs> it's just not how I do it. Yeah. Okay. So I think I filled my gaps. Um, and I will have some little lumps to clean up. So that's okay. But it looks, the, the join is We'll try complete. to be a little more pure with this one for Annie's, <laughs> for Annie's nerves. It's okay. That's also, this, this one, if we're going to leave a lip, we have to be more careful because we're not going to be able to cut right to the edge and like file mm -hmm. and sand it clean. So I do, I need to be a little more stingy with my solder on this one. Oops. Yeah, that one's probably the, I don't know, the size of a nickel maybe. It's um, smaller. And I, don't know. Is I that would, how much solder you put? I would put maybe four. Yeah, I have four. Yep. Okay, and then I'm just trying to eyeball to center that frame. Yeah. Probably have too much flux. It's a little slippery. Yeah, Patty, this current one is smaller than the previous one. The previous one is closer to the size of the reporter. Yeah, I'd say this one's like between a dime and a nickel size. Should have left a little more lip. Oh no. <laughs> my phone's telling me Phone it's time to take my vitamins. <laughs> We'll come over to this other side. Just heating the whole thing evenly, but also making sure that she's heating up the back plate at the same time so that the solder doesn't just flow onto the frame. Okay, my solder's starting to flow, so I'm just going to use the heat uh, to try to smooth out my little solder pellions so that I don't have to do a lot of cleanup. That one. Being stubborn. Well, I'm use the file. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, okay, so that's soldered. We'll pickle both of them and take a look. Punch in a water first and then pickle. So you're not sending pickle particles, <laughs> making them airborne. Pickle particles. Pickle particles. Please also, classify <laughs> your pickle, pickle particles. particles. <laughs> I just want to show this little dish. So what, oh my gosh, and I'm dumb. I just picked it up with my fingers. It's hot. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, so what this is, Ed, she could correct me if I'm wrong, but it is a 
a silhouette die. Um, she used a silhouette die, but pressed too hard, and so it split. You can see that little crack over there. That's exactly what it is. Um, and so now it's a holder for Little Pines of Solder. I, I think I have a video somewhere of making just little tiny, slightly domed copper. I, I don't even want to call them dishes, but I, I use them for the same thing. Like I keep them just like around my soldering area to hold little, little bits of solder, a little wire. So just a, a nice little container. You could, you could save all of your mistakes, quote unquote mistakes, and have a container for hard, medium, and easy solder. Okay, so this one looks good to me. Um, the solder has flowed all the way around. I do have a little bit of cleanup, but I can see the solder has flowed all the way through under Toward the, seam. the center. Yeah, and it's, you know, you can see that it's flowed all the way through under that frame. So I'm happy with this. Yeah. Um, and nice then and clean. We'll solder our little bug, a little critter, there, and then we're ready to cut around. But let me get this other one out of the pickle. Like I, I try to cut mine out and have more failures. No. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes there's failures, but a lot of the time, you learn more from your mistakes. Yeah, I've had a lot of failures too. A whole oh my gosh, a whole lot. <laughs> it's, you, as long as like it, you know, it can be frustrating when you make a mistake or something melts when you're trying to solder it or any number of things that can go wrong. But once you get over the upset of doing that, if you take a step back and think, what did I do? What can I do different next time? Um, so this one looks good. It just needs a little bit of cleanup. Um, it, but it needs, looks fully soldered. It needs a little longer in the pickle, but yeah, it's fully soldered. And I used so much less solder than I did on the other one. I think I overheated it. It's got some fire scale. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so I want that spider for a second. Okay, so there are two ways that you can go about the next step. Um, and I want to talk about both of them. So you know, I have my little element that I want to solder into my frame. Um, we're going to flood solder on the back sorry, of this piece. And then we're going to heat both pieces up until the solder is drawn from the dragonfly onto the back plate. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just going to do that with heat. So I can take this little tiny dragonfly that I've stamped and cut out and I can put some solder on the back. There is a risk that some of the solder will flow up the edges. So, and then I'll have cleanup on the front, which is impossible because you'll just lose detail. the detail of the stamping. So one thing you can do to avoid that is you can make your stamping, flood the back with solder, and then cut it out. That is um, so smart. So that is what I would suggest doing. Yeah, that's so smart. Um, for this one, I'm not going to do that because I already have this little guy cut out. But what I am going to do to prevent or try to prevent my solder from flowing onto my textured back plate is I'm going to use very little solder so that he's just tacked down and not completely fully sweat soldered. Like my solder won't go to every edge. I might have, you know, some areas where the solder hasn't fully flown. But it's, it's stuffed down. It's never, never coming off. Come um, but to do like a true best practice sweat solder, you want that solder to come all the way to every edge. You want the mm -hmm. complete, complete adhesion between two pieces on every bit of the surface area. Um, so I think that's my suggestion for that. One of my samples shows you can see that edge. Yeah. Let me see. Maybe it was this one. I put a patina on so it's a little hard to see but along that brass edge oh you can't really see it but right above my thumbnail if my camera was better you can see oh here we go 
on that leaf. Do you see that that little, I think it's called a fillet of solder. Right along that edge, you can tell that that leaf is soldered down at every point. But like this ladybug, obviously it's not fully soldered down. So, well, it is fully soldered, but the entire surface, back surface of that uh, dragon, not dragonfly, ladybug. <laughs> not fully in contact with the back plate okay so in this one I'm gonna solder my little dragonfly and on this one I'm gonna solder this little ladybug Annie's gonna show you how to do a background texture after soldering on this one um, and then after this one is soldered I'll go ahead and saw out the back and finish do all that stuff um, Jennifer asks, can you say the tip about flowing solder first again yes Okay, so this is like a do as I say and not as I do thing, because I'm showing you one way, but I'm telling you to do it a different way. <laughs> My suggestion to make your life easier and your solder cleaner is after you have your stamping and before you cut it out. So in this state where it's like a blob of metal with a stamping in the middle, flow your solder on the back, then cut it out. I have already cut this one out, so it's too late on this one. I mean, I... Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to flood the solder on the back of this, but I just have to be more careful that the solder is not going to flow down the edges and get onto the front. And so I'm you'll use, use less a whole lot less solder. Yeah. But true sweat soldering, you want the entire back of the piece to be completely flooded with solder. Mm -hmm. um, and you want the full surface area of both pieces that you're joining wherever they're joined to be covered in solder. Does that yep. make sense? Yep. Um, so pencil or ochre the edges. Yeah, you can try that. Yeah, I'm much too lazy for that. <laughs> you could also go in. But this stuff is great. I'm not kidding when I say it. I it's you have to wait for it to dry and this flux one of the reasons i'm not using this today is because you have to wait for it to dry and also this flux is so watery it will want to mix with this yeah um and it will just make a big mess so I'm, that's one of the reasons i'm not doing it uh lynn yes i did sweat solder the ladybug um after we're done with the demos we'll go back and we can talk more about the the different things the okay things so i don't need a lot of flux this time area clean I don't want it opening up so I just have a little bit of flux wherever I'm gonna attach my pieces and I'm gonna get rid of hard solder and I'm gonna cut myself some easy solder mm -hmm. or medium I could go down to medium since I used hard for everything else but because none of the solder is gonna be showing I'm okay using easy I think I'm going to come over to this side okay, so that sorry. I don't... Nope, you're good. <laughs> it's like, what's going to be the best view? The one where my wrist doesn't break. <laughs> um, do you use that masking clay on the edges when using it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, if I wanted to take the time right now, I could take the masking clay and paint it all along the frame so that that solder is not going to reflow. I could paint it on my first original seam that joined the two ends mm -hmm. of the frame together. And you could paint it on the inside of on the back all the plate. textured area where Anywhere. i don't want solder to flow yep and it it washes off in soapy water it's basically it's mud. wonderful like it's actually just like wet clay uh we're not using argentium um argentium you can fuse it so that is another possibility that's just not um oh, i haven't done it yeah so i this don't is... work with argentium I can't really answer very many questions about Argentium. Okay, so I have some easy solder here. And I'm going to kind of do this in two steps. So first, I'm going to flow the solder to my little bug. So just heating up the bug to get the flux all liquidy and glassy. And there's some excess on there. And then I'm going to place, actually that one big one is probably plenty. I just have one large solder chip on there. 
and I'm just going to heat until it flows. Okay, so this is not, this would be not best practice for sweat soldering. Um, you would want more solder on there. You would want it all the way to the edges. You could also, if you have a soldering pick, yeah. while it's molten, you could use that pick and sort of spread or paint that solder along the entire surface of the stamping of the back. So that this better. one, yeah, this, I added a little bit more. This should be plenty to bring the solder all the way to the edge. And this back plate, I don't have any texture, so I'm not worried about this solder flooding out mm -hmm. into the texture. Um, so now I can place my little ladybug or whatever kind of bug this is onto my back plate wherever I want it and then heat. And really what I'm trying to do, I don't need to focus any heat on the ladybug. Um, it's going to heat up naturally just through the back plate heating up. And I need to bring the back plate up to the temperature that the solder is going to flow at in order to join the two pieces. And I'll, I'm looking at it from the side. I'll be able to kind of just watch the piece drop. Stabilize my arm. Oh, did you see it? It just dropped. Um, and that's it. Maybe heat it a little bit more and see if you guys can see that flash along the edge. It's probably hard to see. It's hard to see, yeah. but you can kind of see. All right, so that one's good. This one, we're going to do the same thing, but because I have a texture on this back plate, I'm going to use less solder. So just one um, little It'll be chip, more of probably. a tack, tacking the dragonfly down rather than mm -hmm. having a full, full surface area adhesion. So she's scooting that little chip back into place so that it doesn't go up on the edges. And so as after you do this, when you flow the solder onto the back of the smaller piece, if your metal is dirty, like if you're using sterling or copper and it's black and oxidized, you will want to toss that small piece in the pickle and get it really clean. Absolutely take the time to go clean it. Yeah. You'll just make... Give I'm yourself using a headache. so much flux. I'm being very <laughs> liberal with my flux, so everything's staying clean. Um, okay, so I'm going to get, I'm basically eye level with this. You can't see my face, but I am looking at this straight from the side so I can watch when the dragonfly drops. All right, and then I'm ready to pickle. Um, let's see. Some elements, when layered, you solder onto the walls to attach. I'm not sure I'm fully understanding the question. Like a prong up against a, a frame or something? What do you mean? Um, and then, can you speak to the balling, the solder pallions versus flat? Oh. So, let me see. Let me grab one of the bald pieces that Lena has. So it using solder that you've balled up, there's less surface area where the solder would touch the the metal. So if you're soldering you want to do minimal cleanup, you're always gonna have like a little I call it a shadow. Um yeah. Did you just draw that? Yeah. Okay. I'm amazing. <laughs> amazing. Look at my drawing skills. So you can see there's far less surface contact here with the ball. Whereas if it's just a solder chip, um, you'll have more cleanup that you'll need to do. So the little balls, um, that's what I... Yeah. Mm. It's less surface area. So there's less, less cleanup. 
basically. Like this is touching in that whole space. So automatically you're going to have to clean up a bigger area. Whereas this is just barely mm -hmm. touching right there. And if it flows, you know, say your wall is right here, it's just going to, it's going to flow that way and you'll just have very little to clean up. Yeah. Um, yeah, Lena, we'll talk about the stick in just a minute. Um, now I understand what you mean <laughs> about the layers. So yeah, we will talk about that. Um, while she's pulling those out of the pickle, this is the spider that we talked about earlier about how you could flow solder onto the back of this before cutting it out. Um, you would do that in the same way that she showed on the uh, dragonfly and little ladybug or other beetle um, is you would apply your flux, place your solder. I'm just tending right now. And then you would flow it and then go ahead and pickle that so that you can um, remove all of the flux. Then you would go cut it out, go cut it out and then solder it into place. You're just changing the order of your steps, basically. Yeah. Everything is essentially the same except the order in which you're doing it. So this, this is good. Um, this illustrates what I was trying to talk about with true sweat soldering versus more of like a tack. Oh, good. So this one, you can tell the solder has flowed all the way out to all the edges. Or you can just not tell and believe me. It's a little hard to see, yeah. but you can believe. <laughs> this one, it's soldered down, but there is a gap. Let me hold them in my hands. Yes. Yeah. So this is the and one. Maybe that... go under your light. Okay. So here's the one that is just tacked in the center. So you can see the lip. Um, Mickey, it is. Where did you put the sheet? It's in the files section of our um, Potter People Facebook group. Yeah. I'll post it on the event page too. So this is the one where it's just tacked. Woo. It's a little hard. And you can see the solder doesn't come all the way to the edge. Whereas on this beetle, you can see that slight, it's a slightly different color, at least on camera, Oops. of that solder that has reached the, the edge of the bug all the way around. So hopefully that sort of shows you the, the difference. Oops. Okay, I just posted the handout also on the event page. So it can be found in the file section on Potter People Facebook group or on the event page itself. Yay. And so because I used hard solder on my frame and to join it to the back plate, I had my seam kind of show a little bit. Then I'll just take a little bit of sandpaper. Yeah, it won't take. Down. It's almost nothing. Almost nothing. And so then it would just be, you know, the cleanup. Um, real quick, I'll talk about how this how I put this branch on so I soldered the frame to the back plate my back plate was smooth metal I'll show you how to do that texture in a little bit then I soldered the brass disc and then I soldered the branch and how I did that is I um I press the branch and then the stamping itself is longer than the diameter of this disc. So I placed the full branch stamping on top of the, the frame and then marked the angle and where I needed to trim the branch. So I cut that, the extra pieces off with a jeweler <coughs> saw and then used a file and sanding discs to make slight modifications to both ends until it was a really tight fit. So after my cop or my brass disc was down, I made this branch a tight fit into the frame, pressed it into place, and then I, what would I call it, pick soldered. So then just 
um, I didn't sweat solder the branch. I made sure it was a tight fit. And then is it just tacked to the frame? It's basically? tacked to the frame. Yeah. yeah. So there's no solder underneath the branch here unless it flowed there, which is entirely possible. Um, and then for the dragonfly, I, instead of sweat soldering it into place, because I wanted to maintain this really smooth brass background, I soldered a wire onto the back of the dragonfly and then riveted it in place. You could also solder it in place. Absolutely. You don't want to rivet. Yep. Um, and someone asked for the one, for this one that's just tacked. Is it secure or does it need to be resoldered? It is absolutely secure. It's not yep. going anywhere. No. Um, just true sweat soldering. You get the solder all the way to all the edges. Mm -hmm. And that is not this. This is more just tacked. attacked. Yeah. yeah. But it's not going anywhere. It will never come off. Like, no. It is soldered. It's just not fully sweat soldered. You know, it's something also to do with the design because there is this tall frame around it you're not going to be worried about like getting caught on fabric or something like if if you were making a pair of earrings you may want to take a little bit more care or not necessarily mo more care but do a more complete join just if that element is really exposed um it you know in theory could catch on hair or something but um as far as structurally, no, this is not going anywhere. No. That is fully soldered. Yeah. And then to clean these little bits up, I would use a barrette file. Yeah. Um, let me show you a barrette file. They are, I think I have some here too. Okay. They're wonderful. <laughs> and so this is the one that she's going to be talking about. So a barrette file has cutting teeth on one surface um, and on the back there's no cutting teeth. There's no cutting teeth on the edge, at least on this one. Um, but if yours has it, you can make a safety edge. You can grind off the teeth mm -hmm. and polish the edge. And that way I'm able to get right up against the wall and file this without also filing the back. The back, yep. And they come in a bunch of different sizes. This one is an escapement file rather than a needle file, but it's the same barrette. Oops, come on focus, style. So there's the teeth on that side and then the two surfaces on the top are safe. Do you have yours again? Oh, yeah, sorry. And I'll just do a close-up shot. Um, what size tube did we use for the bezel? We didn't use tube. Um, we formed square wire into a ring uh, to act as the frame. So this is the square wire that we used. What did we decide? 12 gauge? I think it was 12 yeah, gauge. Yeah, 12 gauge solid square wire. Yep. So this is... Try and get it to focus. But Annie used for these a rectangular um, she wire. She used a rectangular wire that looks like it's about one millimeter thick. So yep. about 18 gauge. Yep. But rectangular wire is sold like length times width. So it'll be like I think this, this one is, is like three by one. Yeah. Or Four by one. Four by one. Yeah. Rio has a really nice selection of rectangular wire. I love using it for bangles. Um and also, I buy it for pressing in ring Rings. impression dies. It's so nice for ring impression yeah. dies. Oh, for the tube bale, I honestly don't remember <laughs> what size tubing I used. Um, shoot. It, it was big that? enough. My, uh, caliper? It was big enough for my leather cord to fit through. <laughs> so, you know... Any type of connection like that for like a bale or for a tube, like it's going to depend on the materials that you're using and that you want it to be able to fit. It is a sterling tube. So outer diameter is about 3.26. Okay. Inner diameter is about 2.24. Yep. 
but it doesn't really matter. No. You just need to be able to fit a chain or a cord or whatever you're whatever you have. It. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a tube. You could use a jump ring or you could make another bail mm -hmm. with an impression die or you know, you have a lot so of So this options. is Oh yeah, little... I used a smaller gauge of square wire to make mine. A little ring. So many options. Um does anyone have any questions so far? If not, I'm going to hand the phone over to Lynette and I will show you how to add this texture. Oops, this texture onto the background of your piece. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Julie. Oh, okay. That, that makes, makes a lot more sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we didn't bezel. I don't know. Such a great tip, game changer, especially when soldering a piece like that spider with all the little legs. Yep. Oops, there we go. Okay, doesn't look like there's any questions, so I'm going to show you how to add that texture to the background. Um, I started with flat metal and soldered everything in place. So I did the frame, then I soldered the brass disc, then the little fly, um, and then I will texture the backplate. Oh, there's a question. If you're using several pieces to solder onto the backplate, do you solder them before you put them into the backplate? I solder them, like I'll solder the, the lowest layer of of the design. So I solder it onto the back plate. Yep. And then, um, then the fly came next. So yeah, on the fly piece, the legs are soldered to the brass also. So what I did is this one is not riveted on. The only one that I riveted was this dragonfly. So what I did is I soldered the brass disc and then I, just like Lynette showed you, I soldered, or I flowed solder onto the back of the fly, made sure to get a little bit of solder on each of the legs. Then I placed the fly into the frame on the brass. I formed the fly a little bit just with my fingers. I used a fine silver stamping, but I pressed it down to make sure that all of the legs were in contact with the back plate and the brass. And then I um, heated the whole thing and soldered the fly to the background. Did you see the, the bail? Yeah, I, Pat? I, I kind of She snuck it. it in. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to hand it off to Lynette, okay. and we'll do a quick little... Sorry, guys. <laughs> I know, as it spins around. <laughs> I'm going to take a drink real quick. Okay. <laughs> I want to make sure we put a plug-in for these bugs, too. Oh, yeah. um, we have these insect bodies available right now as part of our spotlight. So just the little center portion. Sorry. Um, and then we have a pattern plate available on our site that we drew these wings specifically to match the sizes of these insect body impression dies. So I wanted you guys to see these. Um, the pattern plate's available all the time. The impression dies are not, but they are currently available right now, these little insect bodies. So I just wanted you guys to see these. Annie turned them into little tack pins mm -hmm. they're really cute and i sweat soldered these <laughs> so sweat soldered the body the, onto the flat yep wings yep and i formed the wings after soldering the body onto the wings and i just used my fingers nothing fancy but they're after soldering they're nice and annealed um, mm -hmm. So they're more pliable. Yep. And you can buy these little um, tack pins just from Rio Grande or, you know, most jewelry supply places will have them. 
And they're usually nickel. Use, yeah. Um, I know mine are. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, a little segue. Okay. I'm just making sure I was curious about how it's connected, not really into bugs. The butterfly plate, it's real good yeah. with the bug bodies. Okay. So for this texture, I use a hammer hand piece in my flex shaft. So this is the same Fordham SR that you use with the oops, the number 30. The number 30 hand piece. Um, and all you do is you pull your hand piece apart. It's keyed. The flex shaft is keyed, so it has this notch, and it notches into you won't be able to see this. Nope. Just <laughs> believe us. There's a keyhole in there. Yeah. So. Jennifer, I'm sorry, but that's our job. <laughs> we do take our job very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just start from. Let's see if I can even find my number 30. Oh, mine's it. on my flex shaft. You okay. want to grab it right I there? just had it. You hit it well. I hit it well. <laughs> Don't mind me. Okay, we'll just pretend this is not the number 30, but that's a quick this change. Is a quick change. But you can like try and line up these notches and push them together, but the easiest way is to push, push the foot pedal and get this spinning really slowly. I don't know if you can see that. Yep, they can. But it's very slow. And then carefully insert it. And it will naturally notch itself in. And you can see that it's moving smoothly. Like, you do have to be careful because sometimes it will appear to fit into the notch. But then once it's on the center piece will stop spinning. And if that's the case, you want to take your foot off the gas instantly. But it's removing a hand piece from your flex shaft is as easy as just you grab it here. You don't want to pull on the cord. Grab here, grab your hand piece, and then pull it apart. But this yes, one. she is using the hammer hand piece for the yes. texture. She's yes. just showing you how to how easy it is to change out hand pieces. Yeah. So it's the same same process. Now, this is with the Fordham. I don't know about any other brands. Yeah, and with the hammer hand piece, it actually is manufactured to be used at lower speeds. Yeah. So you do have to be careful when you're using it with the SR model, or there's a model that's made specifically for the RPMs that this is supposed to max out at. Yeah. Um, and you can also buy, I forget what it's called, but it's like a little box that attaches to your Fordham that controls the speed. It has a, yeah. what is that called? It's like a rheostat or a something. Rheostat, yeah. yeah. So that's what I have at home. So, cause I have the SR model. So I have a rheostat that I use when I'm using the hammer hand piece. So I can make sure that I'm not using it at a higher right. RPM than it's made for. Yeah. But if you just go slow on the foot pedal, that's also completely fine. It's very sensitive, but you do not want to go fast because <laughs> you will be getting a new flex shaft. <laughs> like it yeah. can mess up your flex shaft really bad. Um, now I want to reestat because <laughs> I just use the, the SR and go slow. Um, but that's fine. Yeah. So what I've done, the hammer hand piece comes with anvils. This is what they're, they're called anvils. And they have this really sharp, flat face. To create this texture, you want a a rounded bullet type point, sort of like a, a sewing needle. So this uh, is how they come, but you have to modify it. And correct. Annie's talking about that now. Yeah. And so I, I should have shown it, but before the demo, what I did is I put the anvil that looked like this in my number 30 handpiece, And then I ran it against that diamond hone um, because this is hardened tool steel. So I wanted to use a diamond or silicon carbide um, to slowly form this type of shape. And you want that tip to be 
fine, but not sharp. You want it slightly rounded, like a, like a bullet tip, sort of like um, a burnisher if you do flush setting of stones. And then it's polished. It, you, sort of. you, it's sort of polished. <laughs> It, you can polish, you can polish it. it. Yeah, and then it will leave, you know, a polished finish on your metal. <laughs> it depends on the look you're going for. These are um, dark and a little rougher on mm -hmm. the texture, so it doesn't need to be a highly polished point. Right. And there's different shapes that you could make. Like, this is a, a more blunt dome. Lynette just sent, or not Lynette, Danielle just sent a message and said that there are 47 people watching. Woo! -hoo! We have so many friends, Annie. <laughs> we are so popular. <laughs> it's fun to hang out with you guys. Thanks for watching. So this is the the shape that you're looking for. Um, more of a point, a blunt a, point. Yeah, but with for a, the texture. a longer taper because you want to be able... I don't know if you want to come around here. Yeah, let me, I'm going to come around behind her so we can look over her shoulder. See all my junk. It's okay, at least you're not keeping Fritos in your tray. One time I had Fritos <laughs> in my tray and Danielle made fun of me a lot for it. <laughs> so this longer tapered point, when we go to texture we'll be able to get in close to the frame with that tip as opposed to if we were using say this one that I just showed you the closest we could get is maybe like a millimeter away from the wall so the the steeper the taper on the tip the closer to the wall you're going to be able to get um, and so the hammer hand piece, it works. You just barely depress the foot pedal and it creates a, let me get it going, a back and forth action rather than a rotational. It's like a tiny little jackhammer. Teeny tiny. And it, it takes me a while to get my um, foot pedal <laughs> to be sensitive enough. So there'll probably be a lot of like starting and stopping. Um, so when I do the background, I have everything soldered in place. I like to do the texture while it's on like a hardwood surface. You can do it on a steel surface. Um, but I mean, it's, it's up to you. The wood's going to be a little bit softer. Um, whereas on the steel, you could potentially distort some of the background texture. Um, but basically what I do, I hold everything is secure. Um, there's no cutting surface on this. So I tend to keep my finger on the hammer hand piece and I'm just going to, you could also put it in some thermal lock or something in a vise. And I just go in little tiny circles. You want to go really slow. And then I'll turn, I'll angle it a little bit to get. Just doing a tiny microscopic hammer texture. Yep, that, that is exactly what it is. That point is just acting as a tiny hammer. Hi, Jerry. Thanks for joining. So I have it at an angle to try and get as close as I can to that wall. Like I'm getting a little bit too fast, so I'm trying to just slow it down a little bit more. And I'm just making tiny little circles, fully covering it. So it's not a fast texture. You can see like that's as much as I've done, but it gives you a nice, itty bitty peened surface, like a ball peened surface. Leah says she uses her hammer hand piece for this all the time. Yay! I love it. Yeah, it's good. And you'll have, you'll get different effects based on how you shape your, your anvil points. Um, I'll come over and do a little bit on the metal. I don't know if we'll see 
What we'll I was, hear a difference. We'll hear a difference for <laughs> sure. Yeah, the sounds of metal smithing are very important. So you can tell a major difference. Oh, Diana. Yeah, I didn't get a hammer hand piece until very long into my <laughs> career. <laughs> but ever since I got it, yeah, I use it a lot for texture and then for stone setting mostly. You can also use it for setting rivets. It takes some getting used to, but um, it is a very handy little tool. Um, what we could do if you don't care about this being an amazing finished piece, okay. <laughs> then I'm gonna just do a little sampler. I'll show you what the anvil texture looks like as is, and one that's modified with a slightly rounder tip. So while I'm switching these out, does anyone have questions? It can help create really nice contrast between layers, kind of bumping up the appearance of depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... On... And not to mention, sorry, okay. texture holds patina so yeah. well. Patina loves texture. Yep. That's what I was going to say. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Sometimes we read each other's minds. A little bit. It's a scary thought. This is a liver sulfur patina. Okay, so this is the more blunt rounded end. And so I'll show you what that looks like. Ooh, I zoomed in a lot. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is Annie's phone. I don't know how to use it. It's very sensitive. Just yes, like it me. is. <laughs> <laughs> She's not lying. She's not. I'm definitely not. Oops. Yes, you could make a little bug flight trail. You could do like Ooh. lightning bugs flying. It would be so oh cute. Oh my gosh. I want to do that. That is so good. Okay. So you can see I didn't get as close to the wall as I could. That's because there's no big, or it's a blunter dome. Yeah, and see how here she got right up against the wall. But here there's a, like she said, about a millimeter where she just mm -hmm. can't get in close enough. Yeah. And you can see the difference. It's a larger, either, they're both very tiny, but the, the, the hammer mark is a, a much larger round mark than with the previous one. Oh, wrong tool. And then... A little bug flight trail. Now you should do that and show us. Yes, that sounds show everyone. <laughs> that sound really adorable. Um, also, putting in a plug, just so I don't forget, we are going to do another demo on Wednesday next week, probably at the same time, but we'll let you know. And we have another fun impression die spotlight planned. Mm -hmm. um, should I tell them? Yeah. What it is? You get a little sneak peek. It's. Do I remember what is earring or it's, it's um, embellish? Accents. Yeah, tiny accents and embellishments. And we're going to do like some sort of earring demo. Yeah. So. Embellishing ear wires. Um, we'll probably show how to use the our ear wire formers, all sorts of stuff. So fun little earrings with tiny little accent elements next week. So make sure you put it on your calendar. Um, do we want to commit to 10 or we're just going to tell them it'll be in the morning? And we'll I'm fine know. with 10. Okay. 
Yeah. Same time, same place, ladies and, I'm gonna and gentlemen. I want to show you how I hold tiny little things to saw them out. Not that it's any special trick, but... <laughs> um, so that's next week. This is the anvil tip as it comes. I always modify these. The edges are They're pretty horrible. sharp. horrible, yeah. yeah. It is like a hard, flat, sharp edge. With burrs. Circle. Almost like a, a nail set, but not quite as like inverted. Yeah. So I will show you. That's just like flat and it's just mucking up the surface. Lovely. Isn't it pretty? You can use like the side of it. But these are just designed don't. No, to be they're, modified. Yeah, they're not intended to be used as is. Mm -mm. It's going to leave like fingernail marks in your... It is going to look like fingernails. Ugh. It's not pretty. It's hard to see, but it's not pretty. <laughs> so modify these. Um... You want textures to look intentional and consistent. Yes. And so whatever tool you're using to, to impart the texture needs to have a surface that is also consistent mm -hmm. and intentional. Yep. All right, you guys are saying now to use what I've learned. That's your homework. Yeah. And we expect you fully to do your homework and to check in in the Facebook group and show and us what show you've us, made. Ask questions. Um, know that you might not be perfect from the very beginning. Like, make mistakes. Be okay with making mistakes. So, Dottie, your question is, would it be better to texture the back plate before you add the center embellishment? You can. You can, but then you have to think about things like solder flooding out into texture and yeah. not being able to clean it up without removing all your texture. Plus, solder loves those little valleys that are in texture. It mm -hmm. loves to run along them. So, um, you know, we showed you both ways, and you can Experiment. try both ways and see yeah. what works best for you. So those are, that's our demo. We want to see um, what you make. Take a look at all of the little bugs that we have up on the site today. We have these bug bodies. That pattern plate is up um, all the time. So our little samples. Oh, here we go. Dies. Did I move them? Oh, they're here. Oh, yeah. And we've got some great shot plates up where you get more bang for your buck. So this shot plate is great. You get four different insects. Um, the spider one is very popular. The bug bodies, you get four different bug bodies. I'm covering some of these. So this is one shot plate. I pressed them all on one. You get, yeah, this one is fun. Um, I've posted about this one a little bit. You get a dragonfly and two little beetle things. So that's a good deal. This one is three little ladybugs all in one. And then we have other big ones too. Yeah, oh, this is a pretty. really popular, this is French, right? It is. We have it in, I think, two different sizes. I think just that one is up right now. Okay. I feel like we couldn't find the smaller one. Okay. It's really pretty. Uh, Jennifer, which one did we use with the butterflies? The bug body? I don't know. Um, I had both sets of bug bodies. This one Shot looks plate, like so most weird likely. Hair. I know. Weird combination of both. You'll just have to look at the designs yeah. on the site and see. I like the texture on this one. Mm -hmm. But they both, both bug body plates fit the designs on this. Yep. Um, so, okay, guys. So, all right. Thanks for hanging out. Um, show us your little shadow box pendants. Practice sweat soldering. And we will be back next week. Wednesday, we did commit to 10. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. here 
and we'll be doing little miniature accents and cutting them and yeah modifying ear wires and things like that so thanks for hanging out we love you have a great week guys bye